Hello Internet friends, my name is Chris Masto and this is a quick tutorial on how to set up Adobe Illustrator for laser cutting, in particular for the Glowforge. There are some details of the color palettes and things that we'll get into that are kind of specific to the Glowforge. This is my preference, this is the way I like to do things. Um, I think it, it makes things go a little more quickly and smoothly when you get started on a new project and avoids some of the traps that you might run into if you set up your workspace this way. I'm just going to go right into here and show you a few things that I care about. Uh, first of all, first kind of a basic philosophical point, I'm starting here with the default settings, the, the out-of-the-box configuration for Adobe Illustrator Creative Cloud 2017, as it is uh, as I record this in mid-November 2017. They do change things periodically, so you might not see exactly the same thing as I'm seeing, if you're using an earlier version, if you're using a later version, if you've customized things already. I prefer to start with a out-of-the-box config, make the minimal number of changes to get it to work more smoothly, and then when, they, when Adobe does go and change everything rather than complain about it and try to put everything back the way it used to be, I just I prefer to learn the new way. So I'm using, you know, I'm not reverting to any of the sort of classic interface stuff. I'm going to go go right ahead with the uh, late 2017 model here and, and we'll go from there. Having just said that, however, we will change one global setting. So if you go into uh, Preferences Units, uh, in fact, this might not even be a change, it might be a default, but go into Preferences Units and uh, under General here, ensure that this is set to inches. Um, the Glowforge right now prefers to work in inches. I mean, it essentially has to work in inches. So if you set this to inches, you're going to have a better time. Uh, leave stroke and type set to points. That's the only thing that I, I'm going to change globally. Everything else will be um, specific to the preset that we're going to generate. Before we get into building that default workspace preset, you should go to the Glowforge community forum and download the Illustrator swatch library for the Glowforge that is going to give you a selection of colors that you can use to control the order in which the steps occur. You know, if you want to cut something, engrave something, um, and if you want to make multiple objects that are all part of the same step, you need to make sure that they're the same color. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I think it's very important to be extremely cautious and careful with your color selections as those do. That is the primary thing that controls the steps that you see in the Glowforge UI. So you want to get your colors straight, think like a computer, not like an artist in this case. Um, and so the best thing to do is to go get this file, which uh, is called glowforge.ai. Now, I recommend that we do a little bit of pre-setup work here. So uh, open this file, just actually open it in Illustrator, which is a little bit different than the instructions. So open this up. Um, we're going to ignore the actual content of this file, but we're going to take a look at the swatches that are contained within it. So go to the, the window menu, uh, window swatches. Again, your configuration may vary from the default, but we want to make sure that we are looking at swatches. Okay, uh, This window is a little small, so I'm going to make it bigger. We can see the whole thing now. And what you'll see is that the bottom row here has a folder called Glowforge. There are also a whole bunch of other things in here. We're not interested in the other things. The other things are uh, Illustrator's default swatches, and they're actually just going to get in our way and cause trouble. I highly recommend that you get rid of them. The way to get rid of them is to start at the first one here, which is in my case white, click on that, shift click on the last one, which in my case is this sort of purple here. You can see that all of these colors are highlighted, and then click the little trash can, delete swatch, and you're gonna make all of those go away. Now, I prefer, if you click on the hamburger menu over here, I prefer to look at this in a list view, small list view, rather than in the small thumbnail view. So that instead of the little boxes here, we can see the actual color names. And um, since we do wanna work with a limited palette of very specific spot colors here, I find it easier to work this way than to have the little boxes. Um, and also, once you open this up, you can see that there are two blacks. So we don't really want this uh, extra black here. That's just, again, going to cause confusion. You might draw some things with that color and some things with that color, and then they're not going to come out the same. So 
click that uh, unnecessary extra black there that doesn't have the one. Click the trash can, get rid of it. Uh, it's also possible by the time you, you, you watch this video and download this file, there might be a new version of this file that's pre-cleaned up or something like that. So uh, at the end of the day, what you want, regardless of how you get there, is, is it to look like this. So you've got just none and registration, which are built-in things you can't remove from Illustrator. And then you've got uh, the Glowforge folder with the 13 specific color values, or spot colors, okay? Once you've done that, click the hamburger menu here and go down to Save Swatch Library as AI. That should bring you into the default place where your custom swatch libraries go. File name is glowforge.ai, so we're just going to save that lightly edited version of this. And so now that you've done that, when you go into this menu anytime in the future and you go to Open Swatch Library, User Defined, you'll have Glowforge there and you'll be able to bring this, this Swatch Library back up. So that's kind of handy. So we're going to close that out and close this file as well. We no longer need this file. You can go ahead, uh, don't bother saving it, you can go ahead and delete it if you want. Um, we've already saved the, uh, co the important contents of it as a user-defined swatch library. Now that we've done that, we'll move into the, the meat of the matter here. We want to create a custom preset that we can use whenever we create a new document, and it'll be set up the way we want our workspace to look. So the shortest path there is to click on Create New or File New and go over to Print and choose letter here. Don't double click it, just click it once to make sure it's selected and that loads everything in on the right. Uh, if this says points, change it from points to inches. Again, we really wanna work in inches. Change the width to 20, change the height to 12. Make sure that it uh, is landscape here. Okay, you don't need to change anything else. Just start with the, with the eight and a half by 11 you know, letter print preset, change it to 20 by 12, make sure it's inches and click create. Now that'll get us into a new blank document and now we can start to uh, customize the look of things here a little bit to work the way we want them to work. The first thing is to go up to this menu here where uh, on my computer at least it says essentials depending on how much you've messed with Illustrator you may have something different here but um, I'm going to choose essentials and then this will pre-configure the way that the different windows and panels are set up. And again, if you've already changed them, yours might not look exactly the same as mine. So we want to start from a clean known place. So we're choosing Essentials, and then we're going to go down here to Reset Essentials. And that will put it back to the uh, factory out-of-the-box configuration. So you should only see Properties, Layers, and Libraries. And again, if you have a different version of Illustrator, this might be a little bit different. Um, you'll just have to sort of customize the way you follow along should you do that. Now, I personally find it absolutely necessary to have the rulers turned on. So I would go to View, Rulers, Show Rulers, need that. And then also go to View, Show Grid, and that'll turn on the background grid. Primary reason I turn on the grid and it don't follow along with these steps. I'm just going to demonstrate something. If I go in here and I create a rectangle, you can see that this rectangle is filled with white and it's actually blotting out the background. You can't see the grid through it. If I change this to, to be not filled, then now you can see the grid behind it. Again, white blocks out the grid, none you can see the grid through. So that's how you know whether it's transparent or whether it's filled with white. Otherwise, it looks exactly the same, and you can inadvertently make a mistake there. It's very important to be paying attention to whether things are filled or not um, if you're designing something for the Glowforge. So this is one way that you can keep an eye on that. All right, so having said that now, I'm going to just undo this because I don't want to have a rectangle in my default template. So we turned on the rulers. We turned on the grid. The other thing I like to do is go to the Window menu and turn on control. That enables this control strip across the top, which Adobe decided in their infinite wisdom to uh, remove and replace with uh, properties. The properties panel is nice and you get used to it over time, but it doesn't have as many things as the control strip, so I like to turn that on personally. And now we're going to turn on two more things. One is to go to window and select swatches 
because the swatches are very important. This is how you're going to select all of your colors for the different operation steps. So the way uh, to set this up is we don't care about brushes or symbols. We just care about swatches. So I'm not going to grab the window here from the title bar. I'm going to grab just the swatches tab and drag that out. So you see when I drag that tab out and now drag it all the way to the bottom here of this column on the right side and you'll see a blue line will appear at the bottom. When the blue line appears and you let go, now I've added swatches as a second section to this panel. Okay, so we've got properties, layers, libraries at the top and we've got swatches there. Now the other thing I'd like to do, we can close this window here, we don't need the brushes and symbols window anymore, is to take layers from the top and drag that one, again, drag that all the way to the bottom till the blue line appears and let go. And so now I like to be able to see all three of these things at the same time. Properties, my preference is to have the properties there on the top and then have my color swatches in the middle and then have the layers on the bottom. Um, if I can't see the layers, uh, it's, it's uh, disconcerting to me. Now you might have noticed here that swatches is once again full of garbage. So again, I highly recommend you do the following. Choose the top color, which in this case is white. Um, scroll all the way to the bottom, shift click on the bottom one, click the trash can and say yes and get rid of all of those swatches. Okay. Now use the little menu to go to open swatch library, user defined, Glowforge. This is the one we created before. This will open up a little window with Glowforge swatches in and if you click on the folder here at the left, boom, they will all appear in your document swatches. So now I can close this and now my document here contains nothing but the Glowforge colors. So speaking of which, we're, we're getting near the end here, but there's one more thing which might trip you up. The default appearance here, it has a fill and a stroke. So if you were to go in and you were to create, as I did before, create this uh, rectangle, you're going to get filled with white and with a, a black stroke color, but that's not the Glowforge black. It is some default black that Illustrator has set up. So um, in order to avoid that problem, but there are two problems there really. You generally don't want to create something with both a fill and a stroke. And if you're going to do that, you generally don't want, you, you would want that stroke to be black, not whatever this color happens to be. So to fix that, we go to window, graphic styles. Now this is very similar to swatches. There, there are a list here of some default styles that come in a new document and you can look at them either uh, as icons or as a list. I'm just going to put the list view on to make it clearer here that that first one is the default style and the rest of these are additional styles. So um, because I like things to be neat and tidy, uh, I am going to get rid of all of these by clicking on the top one, which in this case is drop shadow, and then the bottom one, and then click the trash can. I'm never going to use these styles when I'm designing for the laser cutter, so I don't want them in there. And so now we just have the default style, which again is not quite right. So to make this easy for myself, what I would like to do is I would like to make sure that my default appearance is actually not usable. So set, I set the fill to none and I set the stroke also to none. So in this case, so if I make my default appearance none, none, then it will ensure that I have to choose a color from my uh, Glowforge color palette whenever I create a new object the first time I open up a file. So now how do we make that the default? Because the default here is still um, a white fill with a black stroke. So to do that, you go to the window menu, open up appearance, and this white box here, uh, where it says no selection, this white box is a draggable appearance. So you're gonna drag this out of here and then go over to graphic styles, still holding the button down. And now this is very important. You wanna hold down the alt or option key when you drag that onto default. So by doing that, it'll replace that default with, with our new fill and stroke. So I'm holding down Alt on my keyboard and I'm going to let go here on top of there and now it's changed the default so that when I click on that it always selects this uh, 
preset fill and stroke, right? So if I were to change this to, to a green fill, I, I click default over here, it goes back to none. So you want to make sure that this default makes everything go back to none. And now we're good to go so that the whole point of doing this is in the future, whenever I open a new document, it's going to set, start out with this appearance. Now that I've set up the workspace the way that I want it to be, I want to save that as a workspace that I can recall at any time. So you go up to the workspace menu here and go down to new workspace. Give it the name, Glowforge. Save it. And now you've got Glowforge here in the menu. So anytime in the future, you know, if you're in painting or something like that, then, uh, or in another document, you can just choose Glowforge and that will bring the palettes and windows back to the way we've we've configured them with uh, so I can see properties swatches and layers because that's what I like to have there when I'm working on stuff for the Glowforge. Now how do we save this so that it opens automatically and easily in the future when we create a new document? Very easy just go to file uh, save as template and I'm going to call this Glowforge oops glowforge.ait um, on my computer, at least now, it'll tell me that I can't actually write to this uh, program files directory. Um, just save the file someplace. It doesn't really matter where you put it, uh, wherever you keep your documents, wherever fine documents are kept. Um, and now, we're, now we can close the file. And so let's go back to what we did earlier, create new, except now this time where I still have this uh, custom item that I created before. So it was custom 20 by 12. But if I were to open that now, and you don't need to follow this, but I'll just show you what happens. If I open this, um, it's going to open it using the print preset, which means no, I don't have my rulers, I don't have my grids. It's not set up the way that I prefer to have the workspace set up. So let's close this file and get this, uh, get this done correctly. So again, create new. You can leave that selected, but now go to more settings. And in more settings here, it gives us access to the profile menu. So profile drop down, and you can choose in here at the bottom, browse, and then browse to wherever you just stored your uh, glowforge.ait file. And you'll need to change the, the filter here. So it's only showing you .ai files, but we saved it as a template. So if you go to AIT, now I can see the glowforge.ait that I saved a moment ago choose that and now I have Glowforge in my profile menu. So from now on, whenever I create a new document from there, it's going to create it the way that I want it to be. So I've got my, I've got my grid, I've got my rulers, I've got my Glowforge workspace and everything's all set to go. Note as well, because we customize the default style, fill and stroke are set to none. So again, if I close this, having done all this pre-setup anytime in Illustrator, it's going to be very easy. Go to create a new file. I'm going to have this Glowforge right here. Double click. And boom, there's my blank document ready to go. So I could just choose, um, you know, I want to make a black square or whatever. Um, and it's good to go. So hopefully uh, that helps some people out. Uh, with setting up a uh, new preset for uh, for Illustrator, um, and again, you know, you can customize whatever you want in here. This is my preference, and I'm going to make a few more tutorials in the future, and they'll be based on what I'm doing here. So um, you'll be seeing a lot more of this. And uh, if you did like this video, uh, just a reminder: click the thumbs up button, click the uh, subscribe button if you want to see new stuff that comes out. That helps me out as well because maybe I'll get some more views and. Um, get some uh, higher subscriber count. I appreciate that, but uh, that's all I got for now.